Picture yourself as a security analyst and Bobby, who is a website administrator, calls you up and says, hey, our server might have been hacked. What do you do? <laughs> Where do you look to confirm that the server had been hacked? Well, in today's video, we'll be going over a lab called Log Analysis Privilege Escalation by Blue Team Labs. And we get to look at a file called Bash History, which will provide us with commands so we can try our best to follow the chain of events that might have led to a successful compromise. Let's get started. To begin, you wanna head over to blueteamlabs.online and then log in with your account. If you don't have an account, go ahead and select register for free. Once you sign in, you wanna head over to challenges, which is at the top, and then we wanna search for log analysis. The one that we are looking for is called log analysis privilege escalation. I'll go ahead and select start challenge. And let's take a look at the scenario. A server with sensitive data was accessed by an attacker and the files were posted on an underground forum. This data was only available to a privileged user, in this case, the root account. Responders say www-data would be the logged in user if the server was remotely accessed. And this user doesn't have access to the data. The developer stated that the server is hosting a PHP-based website and that proper filtering is in place to prevent PHP file uploads to gain malicious code execution. The bash history is provided to you, but the recorded commands don't appear to be related to the attack. Can you find what actually happened? So this scenario is quite interesting because we are handed the bash history. And if I go ahead and Google, what exactly is bash history? And I'll select the first link, which is a complete guide to Linux bash history. So if we scroll all the way down here, we do see working with bash history, the basics. Bash history is a feature that allows you to view and clear previously executed commands. That is extremely good to know, especially for forensic purposes. And let's take a look at how to see the bash history. The easiest way to get started working with bash is to run the history command with no options. Because I am on a Windows computer, I do have Windows subsystem for Linux. So I'll go ahead and just select my Ubuntu and this will open up a Linux shell for me. So if I wanted to access my bash history, I could just type in history. And here you can see all of the commands that I used in the past, a total of 554 commands. Now you might ask, hmm, okay, where would this history be stored? Well, if I go ahead and clear out the screen here, and if I type in ls-la, you can see that the file that's being referenced is this right here, the dot bash underscore history. And to show you some proof, I'll go ahead and cat out that file. So I'll type in cat dot bash underscore history. And there you go. We have our history file. So what a lot of attackers like to do to perform anti-forensics is to actually just clear out the history but I am not going to show you that. <laughs> but you can easily Google that on your own. Let's head back over to our blue team level one and let's start the lab. The first thing I'll do is download the log file by clicking on download file and I'll save this in our downloads directory. Now you do wanna keep in mind of the password, which is btlo, all lowercase. Let's head over to my downloads directory and I'll right click. I do have 7-zip installed, so I'll use that to extract this file. I will type in btlo, all lowercase, and hit OK. And now we have our directory. Let's go in there, btlo log analysis, privilege escalation. And we have two files. The first one is the bash underscore history, and then we have another file called btlo.txt. So if I go ahead and double click that, it says, this free challenge is owned and provided by Blue Teams Lab Online. Please don't distribute these files outside of our platform. We give them away for free anyway. Okay, I'll close this one out. And we have our bash history. There are a couple of ways to start analyzing this file. If you're on a Windows machine and you have Windows subsystem for Linux installed, you can hold shift, right click, and open a Linux shell. Or you can use PowerShell to view the file, or you can right click, open with notepad. And then here you'll see all of the commands. But what I'll do for this particular demo is open up a Linux shell and I'll use the cat command to read out the bash history. And these are all of the commands that are ran under the www-data account. 
because if I go over to our blue team level one, they say responders say that the www-data would be the logged in user if the server was remotely accessed. I'm going to assume that that is the account that the attackers had accessed. Let's begin by scrolling all the way up and follow the chain of events. The first one we see is nanoindex.php. And then immediately afterwards, we see a touch test.php. If you're new to Linux, nano is essentially opening up a text editor and touch is essentially creating a new file. And by following the chain of events here, we can see that the third event, rmtest.php, is removing the test.php file. Now I'm not gonna go into all of these commands, but I'll touch base on the ones that are quite important. For example, we do see a rm-rf. What this does is that it forces the removal of this particular directory, which is bck forward slash. We can assume what this could be. It might be a backup folder, but without actual context, we can't say exactly what the purpose of this directory is. We see the user typing in pwd, which is print working directory, and who am I? There is an attempt to try and change into the directory of root, and we do see another user called Daniel. So let's take a look at the question here, and it says what user other than root is present on the server? Well, if we look at the commands, we do see a user called Daniel. Now, how do I know that this is a user? Well, it is safe to say that any directory under the home directory is a user. So in this case, Daniel is our second user. I'll type in Daniel, and that is correct. What script did the attacker try to download to the server? Well, let's take a look here. We see that there is an attempt to switch user into root. And then this is a very common Python command that will essentially spawn a shell. And we do see a wget command here that is establishing a connection outbound to GitHub to download this file called linux-exploit-suggester.sh and then output it with the capital O to less.sh. So if we were responding to this particular incident, we would be looking for les.sh on our machines. Out of curiosity, what exactly is Linux-exploit-suggester? Now, based on the name, we probably can assume what it does, but you know what? Let's go ahead and Google that. I'll select the first one here, and let's take a look. LES tool is designed to assist in detecting security deficiencies for a given Linux kernel slash Linux-based machine. That's pretty cool. So it can be used for both good and bad. And I'll go ahead and just copy this, unless the answer is looking for the file only. And looking at the format, it says file name dot extension. So yeah, I will only copy the linux-exploit-suggester.sh and I'll paste that in here. The next question, what packet analyzer tool did the attacker try to use? Scrolling down, following the chain of events, we see env, so they're taking a look at the environment variables. We also see cron tab, and we do see a TCP dump. If I Google what TCP dump is, TCP dump is a data network packet analyzer. And that is going to be our answer for this question here. TCP dump. Our second last question, what file extension did the attacker use to bypass the file upload filter implemented by the developer? And they're looking for an extension. Continuing on here, we see a cat for this particular file of pseudoers. So what the attacker is trying to look for is to essentially see who has administrative privileges. And taking a look at the very last entry here, notice how there's an rm command being issued. This command is telling Linux to remove a particular file. And if we look at the file, it is x.php.html. This particular extension is bypassing our developer's filter. This will be .phtml. And the very last question, based on the commands run by the attacker before removing the PHP shell, what misconfiguration was exploited in the Python binary to gain root level access? So they mentioned before removing the file, and that is this one right here. What exactly is the attacker doing? Well, in order to answer that, we need to look at the command that was ran right before it. And that is the find command. What this find command is doing is saying, hey, find anything under the root directory, which is the forward slash, 
and the dash type with an F flag is saying only look at files. The dash user with the root is saying any files that are owned by root. And then they use a dash perm, which is short for permissions, and it's looking for the dash 4000. This dash 4000 is essentially saying, hey, only include files with the set UID bit. And if the set UID bit is set on an executable file, then that particular file allows the file to be ran with the permissions of the file's owner, which in this case would be root, because they're only looking for the user of root. And again, they're only looking for type F, which are files. So to summarize it in plain English, if there are any files that are found from running this command, the user would then be able to execute whatever file that was found as root because root is the owner of that particular file. And then they ran this command and finally they removed this file. Now, because we don't see anything else except for the removal of this file, it is very likely that under root's bash history, we will be able to see additional files relating to this file. But because we don't have root's bash history, we can't really do too much. But if we were to Google set UID, we can see again, the Unix and Linux access right flags set UID and set GID allows users to run an executable with the file system permissions of the executable's owner or group. Now, if I go over to blue team level one, let's see what kind of misconfigurations was exploited. Number one is reverse shell, and that is not it. File upload, eh, maybe. Three, file write, no. Number four, we have SUID, and this is likely our candidate. And number five, library load. No, that's not it. So if I were to Google what SUID is, it should send us back over to set UID, making our answer to be number four. And then I'll hit submit. And perfect. We just completed log analysis, privilege escalation. Hopefully you learned something new by following along and it can be quite intimidating if you're not familiar with Linux, but trust me, it gets easier. If you want to learn more about Linux, a great resource that helped me level up my Linux skills was a site called Over the Wire. And I would highly recommend you check that out as it is a fun way to learn. And that is it for the video. I hope that you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.